Hi everybody, welcome to this Toon Boom Harmony tutorial. My name is Frank Summers. Uh, in this video we're going to be talking about bitmap versus vector. And I often get this question given to me a lot. Uh, which is the best to work with? And I think more specifically people want to know which is the better to use for roughing out their traditional animation vector layers versus bitmap layers. So why don't we take a look inside of Harmony really quickly. And we can start diving into it a little bit. Um, but before I kind of get into the specifics, uh, I, I feel like I have to kind of say that right up front, there really is almost no answer. Uh, there's no correct answer, I should say. A lot of this kind of comes down to personal preference, and a lot of it is dictated by the particular production that you are working on and the different constraints that go along with all of that. So let's just take a little quick look. I have a color card pop down here really just to give us a little bit of white and I want to throw down a drawing layer. Now just as a shortcut there I hit down uh, I held down control and R on a Windows machine and that will that's a handy shortcut to know because uh, it will give you a drawing layer. Let me hit cancel or close. So no matter where I am within Harmony's UI, so if I'm in my node view or even if I'm in my tool properties for example, I could hit control R and it will always give me a drawing layer. So that's a handy one to know. Okay. So you know we have our options here for vector versus bitmap, and but for this uh, I'm going to keep vector. I'll enable it vector, vector, and I'm going to hit add. And my next one I'll hit bitmap, and I'll make that bitmap. And I'll hit add and close. So now I have two layers of bitmap and a vector. So and let's just really kind of concentrate on our brush. I'm going to use my animator pencil, which by the way is available for one measly dollar on my Gumroad. So please, after this video is over, please follow the link and go nab it for yourself. It's my weapon of choice, so to speak. And I'm going to make it kind of large just for the sake of uh, so that you can kind of see the texture that's involved there. I hope you can see the little yellow pointer. It might get a little lost when I when I head up here into the white area. Um, so, you know, so this is our bitmap layer. And I'm going to switch over to my vector layer. And it's the exact same brush. Now, the reason I, I know this is because I built this brush I built a, they're identical to each other, uh, except one's made for vector and one is made for bitmap, and they both have the exact same properties. So on the surface, they are literally the same brush. And as I draw, you have a very similar looking brush, or I should say a very similar effect coming from this brush on both the vector and the bitmap. Again, I'll put a little B, or excuse me, a little V, here's vector. I'll pop up my bitmap, here's my bitmap just so we can have a bit of a visual cue as to what is what. I mean, as you can see, they're pretty darn close. And I'm at, what am I, 87%? Let's zoom in a little bit here and get really into the nitty gritty. And even when you get into them, you can kind of start to see where the differences already start to come into play. Um, so again, the top one being our bitmap, you can see it's starting to uh, get a lot of anti-aliasing going in there. And there's actually a video before well, I got ahead of myself there, excuse me. The bottom one is our vector one, and the texture is looking a little better. Um, there's a video I think I did uh, previously um, where you can go into the settings and up the resolution on your vector drawings. Um, so please watch that video later on. Um, but that's not really the case for our bitmap layer. Our bitmap layer, we're kind of locked into what we, what our particular layer, the resolution of our layer is when we kind of put this stroke down. We can change that if we go into our, where are you, scene. And if we go into scene settings, um, here is our drawing resolution tab and in here we're going to find where we can up the resolution for our bitmap layers. Um, I believe by default it will be set to 100% um, which means that whatever your screen resolution is that is what your resolution of your bitmap layer will be. You'll see that I have mine set to 200 so I effectively doubled my, my re lay layer resolution um, for my for my bitmap layer and the reason I did that is so that I can give myself a little bit of what's what should I say a little more resolution as I zoom the camera in and out or if I have to scale or manipulate the, the artwork any it'll keep its resolution let me just hit okay for now I think I'm good in here so you can do that for yourself uh, on your own the other thing I like to point out to the difference between uh, vector and bitmap let me see am I on my bitmap yes I am let me zoom out zoom out zoom out now, I hope you guys can see this. Let me hide my color card. It might make it a little more. No, it doesn't actually. Let's keep the color card up. You'll see this dotted line here. This is the end or the edges, I should say, of our bitmap layer. Um, where's my brush? Uh, I cannot draw beyond it. That is the ends of my bitmap layer. So that's another 
con, I guess you could say, for using a bitmap layer. Um, we no longer are able to move beyond that, that area. Um, think of this as pieces of paper. That's typically how I like to conceptualize my layers sometimes instead of Harmony. Um, bitmap layers definitely have an edge to their, pe their pieces of paper. They end, their pieces of paper end. Whereas if I drop down to my vector, um, nope, I can just go, 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 go. I can, wee, I can go forever, right? Now, see what I just did right there? Let me undo. I'm not even sure if you noticed what I did. Um, because again, I'm on vector layers. These are all still independent strokes. And again, I'd like to point out, I'm using my brush now. I'm not using the pencil, um, but they are still manipulatable. I can change them and alter them. And if you even go inside of your contour editor, you'll find something called the center line editor. This little guy is gonna allow us to kind of manipulate the vector brush. So that's pretty handy. Another kind of bonus for working vector. But like I said, I'm using just my select tool to just kind of select these and delete these. Let's go back over to my bitmap layer again. Not so much. I can't just select that individual. I can't get it. It grabs the whole thing. That's because again, bitmap layers are working as kind of a cohesive whole, a little more akin to Photoshop. One final thing, let's take a look at it. Our color, where are you? Here you are. So notice right now, while I'm, I'm currently on it, I'm on my bitmap layer. Here's my color and how it appears for my bitmap layers. If I jump over to my vector, we get something that's a little more what we're used to kind of seeing, at least on the default side of things. Um, so that means if I change my color, if I have to change my, if I change my mind, if I want to change my strokes, my brush strokes to like red, notice the vector once changes, but the bitmaps do not. So that's kind of yucky, right? Not so fantastic. Let's put that back. Let's just put that back to black. So where does that kind of leave us with things? So right now on the surface, vector almost does kind of sound a lot easier to work with. So if I, in other words, when as I'm, if I'm on a bitmap layer and I'll go to my bitmap layer and let's just, I'll thin my brush out a little bit. Here's another shortcut for you guys to kind of keep in the back of your mind, uh, O on your keyboard. O will allow me to size up and down my brush. So I'm gonna hold down O, I'm gonna scale it down. But if I make it even smaller, holding down O and releasing. So keep that one in mind, guys. That's a good handy shortcut to know. Uh, let's see, what was I doing? I'm on my bitmap layer, let's do a little demonstration. So let's pretend this little sphere here is going to be a character that I'm about to draw. Okay, and I have my, my lines I'm using to denote the uh, eye line and the center of the head. Let's go to our vector layer and do this. Let's replicate the same thing. And again, I'm on my vector layer. I'll have it look this way. Great, awesome, perfect. So if I wanted to go into maybe tie this drawing down while I'm on my vector layer, it's really easy for me to just grab those lines and zonk them out and away we go. We're pretty good. We can maybe move forward with cleaning this up a little further and refining it. Not so much for our bitmap layer, if you remember. I can't just individually grab those lines without grabbing the entire bitmap layer. I could, of course, use my cutter, which is hiding up, not hiding, but it's nested inside of our uh, selection tool. We can grab our cutter and we can use our cutter to kind of make a selection and dump and delete, I should say, like that. Or we could use our brush to, to erase. So now again, I'm giving a lot of like kind of bangs against bitmap brushes here. I don't want to make it all sound like doom and gloom. One of the things that bitmap sort of has over working in vector brushes is the feel of it. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to explain it visually to you folks, but let me go to my bitmap layer and let me pull up. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, let's change this to a bit of a gray just to make it a little more pencil like. As I kind of sit here and build up my line, it has a bit more of a natural feeling to it. It's, I can't really, it's hard for me to, to show it and to demonstrate it on uh, for you guys, but as I'm sitting here just kind of drawing you know, whatever, a little squiggly line or something like that. This feels very natural. When I switch over to my vector, I can get, let me thin that out a little bit. Let me thin my brush out a little bit. It's kind of a similar experience. It just has a little bit more of a, I don't want to use the word dull. That's not quite the right word for it, but it has a different feeling. 
it's not quite as immediate maybe as the bitmap is as the bitmap brush would be um, so that's where your personal preference would come in if if you're choosing to work in a, on a bitmap layer so you you sort of get that little more of a tactile sensation when you're using a bitmap layer one of the final things I'd like to point out too with our bitmap versus vector and this is a kind of thing kind of a, a big one so here's our tool properties and again our tool properties tab is context sensitive to whatever tool we currently have selected um, currently I'm on my vector one and you'll see over here we, the only option we have to kind of play with is our maximum size in minimum size whatever however you like to slice that but our, our maximum size there so that's really the only option we can kind of play with on our vector texture brush so let's zip up to our bitmap layer and look what just happened not only do we have our maximum size available to us but we also are a bit of we also have the ability to control the flow and opacity of the brush on the fly which can give you a little more again painterly approach to you know perhaps making a sketch so I could really quickly sketch in the character's face you know, um, you know I'm not gonna belabor this for the sake of for the sake of time, I'll just quickly throw in a little character's face. <clears throat> and now I can play with my flow and my opacity. So we can pull the flow down a little bit and let me pull the opacity down just a tad. And maybe pull our brush size up a little bit. And now we can kind of start getting some, the ability to kind of get some, build some tone up a little more naturally. A little more of a natural feel to it. Again, it kind of goes to, it plays to the strength of being a bitmap brush. And if I wanted to, I can pull that flow, pull up, pull that flow back up a little bit more, and we can put some more core tones in there, and really build up this layer, these tones a little more naturally than we could with the vector brush. So again, this is these are these are you know you lose that ability when you switch over to the vector brush. Again, it's a give and take, and to read, just to end to wrap up this video, a lot of it has to do with your personal preference, how you like to work. But more importantly, the demands of your particular production. If you find yourself in a position, and most television productions will not use vector brushes at all, um, but if you're working on a specific something more of a one-off, or you're building a very, uh, what's the word I should say, uh, you know, a certain design aesthetic that you've uh, created for a short that you're working on, um, for some reason, uh, Lighthouse has come to mind for ta from Tonico. Uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Help me. Uh, I can't <laughs> forgive me on that one. If you remember, put a comment in the. It's very brush-like looking. I believe it was done in Photoshop. If I'm not. Uh, oh boy, someone help me out on there. Someone put it in the comments. It was. Uh, I believe it was up for an Oscar a couple years ago. A uh, little pig guy, I think. A little pig character, and they're inside of a lighthouse. Um, but but it has a very brush-heavy look. Very painterly look. And if that's the look you're going for, then maybe the bitmap layers could be your buddy for that. So that about wraps it up, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on this video. I really appreciate uh, you uh, spending your time with me. Please check me out on all my social sites, and I will hopefully talk to you soon. Take care.